What's up y'all, Mandy here from On The Grow and today I'm gonna to share with you how I grow radish microgreens just like this using our white tray kit. So stay tuned for the video. Before we get into the grow, let's talk about what comes in this kit. We have a humidity dome, a reservoir tray, a mesh tray, some instructions on how to use the kit, one of our scraping cleaning tools to help clean the grow medium, and two sheets of our silicone reusable grow medium. This kit is perfect for home growers and people that are limited on space, as well as those that want something beautiful to grow their microgreens in while still getting an abundance of them. Something to be aware of with this kit is it does not come with seeds, so you'll have to buy those from your favorite seed supplier separately. Another thing to note is if you don't wanna use the silicone reusable grow medium with this tray, you don't have to. You can still use cocoa core and soil if that's what you prefer. Now let's get growing. The first thing that we're going to do is a little bit different than what we do with other grows. We're gonna take that reservoir tray and we're gonna fill it with four cups of water. Now this water can be plain water that's in pH balance, or you can even add your nutrients into the water. Now that I have my water added into the tray, I'm going to take that mesh tray and place it on top just like this. And then we're gonna take one sheet of silicone medium and place it into the mesh tray. Now we are ready to start seeding this. For this grow, I'm gonna be using two tablespoons of China Rose Radish Microgreens. Just like with other trays, I'm doing my best to seed it as even as I possibly can. Now that our microgreen tray is seeded, it's time to water them so that way they can begin germinating. For this, I'm just using regular pH balanced water. You can also use a prophylactic spray if that's what you'd like. Okay, now I just need to take that humidity dome and place it on top, inverted, just like that, so that way it makes contact with the seeds. Now that our tray is seeded, watered, and the humidity is being trapped in, we just have to place this in a dark area. For me, I'm gonna be putting it on my shelf here, but if you just have a countertop space, that will work perfectly too. Just remember when you're moving it, not to tilt it too far to one side or that water's gonna slosh all the seeds around and you don't want that. Typically at this point in the video, I'd be telling you to miss them twice a day and check on them twice a day, morning and evening. But with the method that we're using to grow them, we don't need to do that. In fact, we're only gonna be checking them to see if they're doing okay, but we will not be missing them at all during the entire germination thanks to the method that we're using to grow them. So what is that method? Well, by adding the water to the bottom reservoir during the initial seeding process and germination, we are actually doing a sprouting method. We have learned that with this particular tray, it works perfectly for growing microgreens while also minimizing the amount of steps that you have to do to grow them. I'll see you guys over the next few days and we'll just give some updates and show you how they are growing. All right, y'all, we're gonna check and see how our microgreens are germinating. Something I am noticing is right here, I could see that the humidity is nice and trapped still, but I am noticing there is a spot right there and right underneath there where it appears my seeds have gone a little bit dry and they're not germinating as fast as everything else. So what I'm going to do is give those just a light mist in that area. That way we can make sure that those ones germinate and let's just place that lid back on. Sometimes that might happen if you have really good airflow like we do in our space. See you tomorrow for another update. Today is day three for our radish grow, so why don't you come on over here and let's take a look at where it's at. Okay, y'all, I am noticing that we are ready for the next phase. I can tell this because one, the lid is being pushed up by the germinated microgreens underneath, and I am also seeing more of the yellow plant than I am of those dark seeds. Now what we need to do is first, I wanna check this bottom tray and see what we have going on, which we are seeing the roots coming through, so that's awesome. I am noticing that my water in here is turning a little bit brown, so I'm gonna pour that out. I'm gonna refresh it with new water and we are gonna show you what to do next. Before I show you the next step, I wanna show you a trick for refreshing the water underneath so that way you don't mess with your germinated seeds above. If you take the lid that's like this, just set it aside and then take your mesh tray with the microgreens growing 
you can place it in the upside down lid like that so that way you don't smush those delicate roots. Now what I'm gonna go do is I'm gonna pour out this old water and replace it with a fresh four cups. Now that we have refreshed the water, it's time to take that tray, place it back how it was originally. But this time, instead of having the dome like this, we're gonna flip it into an actual dome on top. That way, it looks like that. Now I'm gonna take that carefully so I don't splash water, and I'm gonna put it into the light here on my shelf. And that is it for today. You can check it morning and evening if you'd like to make sure that those roots are getting water. Basically, you just don't want them to start turning brown because if they turn brown, that probably means that they are not reaching the water and you'll want to add in a little bit more water. Now, over the next few days, we will check on this and see where they're at in growth because it's gonna be amazing to see how they go from that cute little tiny sproutling up to their microgreen size. I will see you guys over the next few days. It is day four for our China Rose Radish. Let's take a peek at what's going on. Right away, I'm noticing that we have a lot of humidity trapped in there, which is what we want to see. And underneath that, we are seeing a beautiful tray beginning to grow. This is awesome. They're getting nice and tall and they're definitely looking way taller than they did yesterday. Let's check out the roots. Roots are looking really healthy and good. They're still white, which tells me that they are not drying out. So what I'm going to do is just add a pinch more water to that. All right, now we're just gonna take that lid, put it back on top like it was, and push it back a little bit. I'll see you guys tomorrow for another update. Almost there. It is day six for our radish grow. So come on over with me to the table. I'm gonna grab this and we're gonna take a look at the growth. All right, y'all, so something I am noticing right away is that our humidity dome is being pushed up by our radish microgreens, which is perfect, that's what we wanna see, which tells me too that it's time for the next step. So what we're going to do is we're gonna be removing this humidity dome today, and for just a moment, we are going to pull out that tray and set this in here because we need to refresh this water. I poured out all the water that was in it before, and replaced it with a fresh new four cups of water. Now we can place our tray back into it. Our roots are looking gorgeous. Okay, so what we gotta do now, let's place that tray back inside and voila, we are done with this step. We no longer need that humidity dome. Into the light we go. Shabam. All right, y'all. So tomorrow I'm gonna see you guys for another update on this radish. And I believe tomorrow might just be harvest day. I'll see you then. Today is day eight of our radish grow. And today is a special day because it is harvest day. So why don't you come in a little bit closer and we'll take a look at this crop before we dive into the harvest. Taking a closer look at this tray, I am loving the growth on it. My radish are nice and tall. The coloration is very vibrant on this stem, as well as this top canopy is a nice, rich, dark color, which I am loving. Now, the reason why it's harvest day is because one, I like this height that they're at. If I let them go any longer, they're gonna to begin to fall over, which is not what we want to see. We want them to stay nice and tall, just like this, without all the fall over. The other thing that I'm noticing too is that in between these two cotyledons here, we are starting to see the sign of the first true leaf right up in there, which I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it when I hold it like that, but that's another sign that these are now ready for harvest. Since it is harvest day, we are definitely going to need a tool to harvest with. For that, I'm gonna be using this green handled knife here. If you're curious where to find it, we do sell this on our website and it comes very sharp. The next thing I'm gonna need is a scale. I like to use a scale just because it allows me to get a harvest weight for my microgreens. You don't necessarily have to do it. It's just nice to know how much you got from your tray. And of course, also a bag to harvest into. That way you can store it in your fridge after you're done harvesting. Time to take the first cut. Look at how beautiful those radish microgreens are looking. One thing I really like about the China Rose is that beautiful pink, you get all the way up the stem. Mm. 
Notice how whenever I am cutting into my microgreens here, I'm cutting about an inch above the medium. That way I don't risk cutting the medium itself. And that's the other benefit of stretching. I'm a little bit taller using the blackout, non-blackout method <laughs> that we use for the stray. It allows them to get a little bit taller so you don't really lose much of the crop at all. Now I wanna show you guys something else that's really cool about the silicone medium is you can grab a little section of your microgreens and carefully wiggle them free from the medium and you will have yourself the entire stem along with part of that beautiful root structure. Now that we have finished harvesting this tray of microgreens, let's take a look at our harvest weight. I was able to get 232.2 grams of radish microgreens from this single tray. So this is our scraper cleaning tool and it is used to gently scrape clean our reusable grow mediums and you can also use it on mesh trays and things like that because it really does help to remove those roots very quickly. So come in closer and I'll show you how to use it. Now, let's flip that over. Now that we have removed all of these roots and stems, this medium can be washed, sanitized, and then reused again. In case you're curious what we do with all of these leftovers, we compost ours, and then we reuse that compost later on in our garden. Well, y'all, that was the end of this video. I hope that you guys enjoyed it as much as I did, and I hope that you were able to grow a beautiful tray of radish microgreens using our white tray kit and silicone reusable grow medium. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you dislike it, give it a thumbs down. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section down below. And be sure to check out our website, www.onthegrow.net, where we have a ton of microgreen and gardening related products. And if you haven't already, be sure to check us out on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook at, at On The Grow Farms. Happy growing, and I'll see you next time.